Hello, everybody, and welcome to Breaking Ponies, where something good is always cooking. Yes, I do good cooking. What? I do good cooking. Oh, okay. What did you think I said? I don't know. I, I've never seen you cook, so I wouldn't know. Well, I can. I can cook very well. Thank you very much. Well, and I'm not talking drugs, or am I? Uh, probably not, because you wouldn't admit that on the air. But yes, hello, um, everybody, yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple more Strongest episodes. Drug I've ever taken is a we have a massive. couple more episodes for you today. Uh, yes. Well, in fact, we have three more episodes, which is so different from what we usually do. Yeah. For ponies, we have Sweet and Elite, which is a rarity one. It's another rarity episode. I didn't realize just how many rarity centric episodes there were until I started. And you you thought I was crazy when I was complaining about this earlier. <laughs> well, it's odd. I didn't quite realize just i don't know maybe, maybe there aren't that many rarity centric ones and we're just focusing on them because you don't like her very much i don't know so there do seem to be an awful lot of rarity ones but we only had the one rarity Thankfully, episode. and the one after it was actually quite good so that helped so we'll push through this one and yes. we'll, we'll get to the good one i mean if i took more notes on this one than the second one but um so we have rarity is in canterlot for some reason she was there it's not really established why she went there in the first place i think she went there to get supplies uh yeah there to get supplies or they're just a day out kind of thing and she is overjoyed because she has been given the opportunity to stay in celestia's castle in one of her guest rooms yes because obviously celestia is going to be polite and happy and welcome her and to stay in her house so she's helped there by the squeaky voice teen <laughs> in pony form what's um, the teenage term for a horse i was just trying to think that up because it, it, it's cult is a boy and i don't think there is a term no i don't think there's a term for a teenage when you want for a child and one for an adult they're but... either, yeah there's either they're either a child or an adult they don't really have a Whatever. She's really enjoying being very classy and fancy, and then she ends up getting the attention of some of the other upper class ponies there, which doesn't quite go well because she also ends up meeting one of her local Ponyville residents, who is just the worst possible stereotype. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's such a, I want to say hillbilly. He even has the buck teeth and. Yeah, even with the uh, buck teeth and stuff, and just. Yeah, the, the, the kind of guy who you could probably see wielding a chainsaw and a, a, a mask if you're not careful. Well, maybe not um, that insane. He doesn't seem that insane. He just seems very uh, simple, which is yeah. definitely not the kind of character Rarity wants to emit. To knowing, publicly at least, because she has to keep up appearances, doesn't she? Yes, she doesn't want to appear to be associated with someone like that, who she really isn't. She just knows him because they're from around the same town. town. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's a Ponyville is a relatively small place. You're going to learn. Yeah, to you're going to end up meeting pretty much everybody. But it works out in her favor because she ends up meeting Fancy Pants which is it's such an obvious name yeah it's like you know again did his parents call him that when he was a kid i mean well I mean, his parents we, probably were rich as well so yeah to be honest fancy pants is probably a, a more reasonable name to go through your whole life with because everyone in Canterlot is kind of very snooty everybody walks around sort of with their noses turned up yeah, so it's just how can you see little... where you're going it's like, no wonder your nose is turned up. You keep running into walls all the time. So I suppose Fancy Pants isn't this too strange a name. He's actually probably one of the more reasonable characters in the episode. Yeah. Well, later on. People... I, of course, he invites her to special important event number 3024, the <laughs> Wonderbolts Derby, which it really doesn't matter what it is. It just matters that it's the special event that she's been invited to. That's not really something that she would be able to attend just living in Ponyville. Yeah. I mean, the event itself is it's pretty much glossed over really yeah it's... it's really not important at all where she just ends up going because she decides it's better for her career even though she wants to work on a gift for twilight a to thank her for getting the room with celestia's castle but also to thank her because it's her birthday there's a lot of birthdays going on in this show well time does move even if it's a little wibbly so yeah you do have people having birthdays it doesn't move in a straight line it's made up of wibbly wobbly it's wibbly wobbly time wimey, wimey. wimey. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I wanted to get in there first. <laughs> But yeah, she ends, she ends up having to juggle the idea of, well, can she make the dress or can she go there? So she decides it's probably better for her career if she goes, which is, I can understand that. And obviously her friends would understand that too. So yeah. the biggest problem with this episode is that I don't really think there's even that much drama in the episode because it's centered about what she thinks other people will think and less so about what they will actually think. Mm. It's more about her being worried what they'll think than what 
they actually do end up thinking. Yeah, it, it's a strange one because, I mean, you know, Rarity is established that she does worry about what the other people think about her, but it's kind of weird in that she obsesses about that, but that technically not what the episode focuses on right. in that sense. In like, the episode focuses on the fact that, you know, she's trying to spend time with these other people rather than with her friends, rather than the fact that she's obsessing about what other people think. Yeah. Because the lesson at the end wasn't even about that either. Yeah, the lesson is... I don't remember what the lesson was. You didn't write it down? <laughs> Not this time. Ugh, honestly, useless. Absolutely. I was just enjoying the abuse to Rarity. Well, yeah, I did say that you were going to enjoy she that. She does get quite a bit of abuse in this. Wait, where she, she doesn't get so much a bruise, but she kind of gets herself tied she, up in She does knots. kind of like have to spread herself every which way to try to accommodate these people. Because she keeps trying to work on the dress, but she also keeps getting invited to all these different events. Which she obviously wants, but she's torn. Because she wants to be nice to her friends as well. And eventually she just decides, well, she can't do it because she finally gets invited to a really important thing that's the exact same day as Twilight's party. So she decides it's probably best for her career if she goes to the other party. And any true friend would understand that. Now, I, I want you to remember this. To... I want you to remember this because this will show up again in a later episode. I can't remember which one it is. I think it's in the fourth season, I think it is, where um, a line. similar... <laughs> sorry. Quite a ways down the line, then. Yeah, quite a ways down the line. A very similar thing comes up, and I want you to try to remember this, because we will be having this exact same conversation again. And in point of fact, for the record, the lesson that she learned at the end is that you can't ignore who you are and where you come from. Right. As remember, much as some you know, people will... I mean, there's, there's a lot of people who want to ignore it, or they the fact that they can't ignore it, even so far as the fact that they're glad they're not from there anymore. Yeah, which is kind of weird because, you know, some people will literally go out of their way to pretend they're not from somewhere. I mean, you know, there's I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, if the place you come from is a shithole, you're not going to want people to know that. Well, you could be proud that you're no longer there anymore. It's, oh, yeah, I came from a piece of shit. I'm so glad I don't have to go back there anymore. Which yeah, I, you true. totally see from a lot of, well, not a lot of people, but you do see that occasionally. Mm. True. But it all ends up working out for the best for her. Yes, where, because since she wanted to go to this special event, she told them that Opal was sick. So <laughs> being the good friends that they are, they end up showing, hey, if you can't come to the party, we'll bring the party to you. Yep. Which, Makes so, sense to which me. gives us the classic Flintstone setup where she has to be in two places at once. And thankfully for her, they are literally right next door to one another. Yes, that's quite convenient. And she doesn't have to change her clothes or anything, which could have been an opportunity for much more humor where she has to keep changing her clothes to go between the two. Two places that, that would have been a bit like mrs doubtfire right which is uh you know classic it's very much a classic thing. sitcom or sitcom setup yeah yeah very much you do so, sort but, of get that where she shows up to the one party holding a croquet mallet in her mouth yeah no one can play croquet properly can they not in movies you know the number of time you see people they just tap the thing and they always miss Either, it's like this one didn't even miss it didn't even it only went like a foot he's like he wasn't really trying very yeah he hard. Was, they, were, they weren't even trying to play the game they were just kind of talking and idling batting at a ball which i i don't know maybe that's like the point of croquet maybe you're not supposed to actually play croquet you're, yeah, you're supposed, just supposed to, to be kind of socialize whilst yeah, tapping it's just the ball it's around. just an activity that you do while you're talking like when we play minecraft yeah pretty much actually that's a pretty good analogy that works Okay, craft, yes. So she, they end up pretty much crashing the other party because, hey, you're you're hanging out with these guys. We want to have some fun, too. Let's show them how we, they party in Ponyville. And, of course, she is utterly mortified by this. But, yes. again, it's not really... It doesn't end up becoming a problem because, I mean, Fancy Pass just finds everything so quaint and enjoyable. And mm. she loves the very simple dress that she made for Twilight, even though she wanted to make something more extravagant. But Twilight likes it because she likes simple. She likes something straightforward and practical. Yes, I can totally agree with that. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, like I said, there's really not that much drama in this episode because she builds it up to be this horrible thing, but nothing ever comes from it. Which, I mean, I guess there's something to be said for the bait and switch. Yeah, I think this is just basically just your... It's it's almost a bog standard episode. I mean, literally, it's baseline on almost everything. Yeah. The only sort of nice thing about it was there was a half-decent song in the middle of it. Which had a complete different voice actor for it. <laughs> it actually says in the credits of almost every single episode that the singers are different 
different voice actors from the oh, actual Yes, but usually actors. they get someone who sounds remarkably similar. It does. It just I, This one was very obviously a different singer, though. Well... It's usually not that uh, obvious. I guess it depends. I mean, she sung songs... You know, the same singer has sung songs for Rarity in the past. You never commented then. I guess I wasn't paying attention to it back then. Probably not. Maybe, I, don't th- I think this is the first one that... Well, not really the first one that was just her. It might have been the first oh, one that was did, just um, her. She did Art of the Dress, remember? But wasn't that also... Wasn't that sort of had support as well? Um, It had a little support, but it, it was largely just rarity. Um, I guess I just wasn't paying as much attention back then. Well, you don't pay attention when it's a rarity episode. Usually so. not, right. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, so at least you have a sort of vague excuse. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, like you said, it's fairly just kind of a straightforward episode. Not too much really shook anything up. Very standard, honestly. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it was. I suppose it was nice to see a location other than Ponyville. Right. You know, yeah, Canterlot's very uh, a extravagant kind of place, but everybody there does seem very snooty and upturned nose, like you said. Yeah, it's, like I said, it's a very strange place, Canterlot. I, I, you know, because it's like the capital, you know. Right. I lost my train of thought. Moving on to the next episode, Secret to My Excess. Which you said was definitely the better of the two Oh, episodes. yeah, absolutely. And I, and I agree. this is all based around Spike, who is <laughs> vastly becoming my absolute favorite character in this show. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, he's, he's pretty much the only male character for a start. So he's got that going for him. And he's, he's just fun because he's kind of sarcastic. Yeah, not, there's not that many characters that have that much sarcasm to them. They're always very polite, but he's very, he's snarky, but he's... He's still likable in that sense. Yes, he is. He's, he's he's good fun and he's a good character. And he's in a way, he's kind of a good foil for Twilight because you know Twilight's very well. Twilight's a dork, which we get to see in this in the very start of this episode. <laughs> oh, yeah, st- we start off with Twilight being a dork. Yeah, who's literally deciding to take all her books off the shelves so she can spend the afternoon putting them back on the shelves. Well, it's because it's reshelving day because she has to reorganize everything. Which I Apparently. sometimes the best way to do it is to start from scratch. Yeah, that that is true. I mean, you know, unless you're someone like me who actually organizes things as they go she, you do have i'm to sure have she things. does that too but occasionally you just slowly get out of order not around me they don't <laughs> um, I, I remember one time i went back to play i forget what video game it was but i had to go through like four or five different cases because the games were like shifted over by one <laughs> Oh god! It's like I was searching for, I think Smash Brothers or something, and I I opened the Smash Brothers box I was like, wait, this is Metroid Other M. So like in the Metroid Other M box, I was like, wait a second, this is God of War or something, and I, guess I, and I was like, I had to shift them all over by one. Yeah, can I point out you just technically mixed Wii games with PlayStation Two games? There. I it that, wasn't God even of, on my level. It wasn't wrong. God of War. It's just that that was the first game. I couldn't think of anything mind. else. It was the first game that came to mind because it's what I played recently. I can I imagine you must be very horrified when you open up smash brothers to find other m inside there <laughs> then again if you open up other m and find other m inside there you should be equally as horrified exactly but we're getting way off topic here <laughs> come on look we've, we've got a fun episode to talk about let's yes. get back on uh, track. this has this has spike's birthday because there's a lot of fucking birth there's this birthday in pretty much every single episode we did today. um well, there was a birthday in every single episode we did today because we did two episodes and there were two birthdays. And then a third birthday. <laughs> there was a third birthday? In Breaking Bad, yeah. Was there a birthday in Breaking Bad? Yeah, Ted's birthday. Oh, God, yeah, that's what there was. <laughs> we'll get around to that. Okay, so yeah, it's Spike's first birthday in Ponyville, which I believe is actually a plot point where the fact that why this hasn't happened before. Uh, Yeah, technically. I mean, they, you know, they've been in Ponyville, which also points out they've been technically in Ponyville less than a year. Right. By obvious logic very most up a year at this point because i don't think it was his birthday when they first yeah i mean as i said time is weird i mean yeah, it, it's time an episode is very because i think th- i'm pretty sure they've had at least two birthdays for one pony at some point uh well let's see who's both they've had pinkie pie's birthday they've had twilight's birthday they've had spike's birthday who else's birthday have they had they had gummy's birthday of course that was the same, that was the same one as pinkie pie's though i don't think they've had anybody else's have they? it just seems nah, like they, well i guess pinky throws so many parties they don't really need an excuse to that's true have a party so i guess i was thinking there were more birthdays than there actually were <laughs> probably but yeah he ends up getting because since he normally only gets one gift from twilight which is always a book mm. which she was planning on giving him this year big shocker <laughs> so he ends up getting a lot of presents from everybody else which kind of pushes him over the line and he ends up getting incredibly greedy mm. and so he goes on out to the town to get gifts from other people to see if they can so to see if he can trick other people into giving him gifts including this sweet pimp hat <laughs> It's a cool hat. I was just thinking, you know, give him a couple of glasses and he could start selling math. <laughs> 
Well, he and, does um, get a bunch of blue crystals. Well, yeah, he, he gets a blue sapphire, sapphire cake, cupcake. Because, of course, he's a dragon. He yeah, so he can gems. he can eat those kind of things. So, Which, of course, he was saving a special heart-shaped fire ruby, as they called it, for it his own ruby. special yeah. birthday dinner, which is kind of like eating candy for dinner, which is not a smart idea. But, but... Um, well, I, that's the thing. I don't know if gems taste like candy to dragons because they eat it all the time so i don't know if it's like a special treat kind of thing or what or you know if it tastes like candy or if it tastes like something else maybe it's like different gems taste like different things perhaps a fire ruby would taste kind of spicy yeah or spicy or it tastes like jalapeno or yeah, sapphires would taste like blueberries. blueberry or something yeah probably something like that but you know like how you try to work out the flavor of a, a lolly or or a sweet from the color or something like that mm, it tastes like blue yeah it tastes like blue or it tastes like red <laughs> it's like artificial sweetener yum mm. it tastes like corn syrup it tastes like regret it tastes like poverty anyway let's keep going because this joke got old fast where the hell even were we in the episode? We were talking about we... his sweet pimp hat. Oh, yeah, that's right. He gets his cool hat of cheerily and then starts going around to all the other people. All and trying starting to... like request presents, which is I mean, she willingly gave him that hat because she she wanted to give him something but didn't have anything with her. But she managed to find something for him. But then he ended up actually demanding things from other people, which is not what you do. No, <laughs> that's you, the you, asshole. You don't demand move. presents. That's definitely a, a dick move. No. So he ends up getting a whole pile of stuff, including the kitchen sink. Yeah, literally, including the kitchen sink, I mean, which is even, obviously put in there. Yeah, on obviously place. put in there as that joke. But Twilight berates him for it, but he still ends up doing it anyways, which makes that completely pointless. And he wakes up. He has pretty much gone through puberty. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, he's basically like he's twice three the size, times the his size. Arms actually have joints now. Yeah, well, proper joints. He's got some sort of muscle growing on him. And he's getting well, a little um, grabby. He's become a kleptomaniac, essentially. Well, yeah, it's, it's his hoarding instinct kicking in. Yes, which actually makes a lot of sense. It may, it explains quite a bit about the, how the dragon mythology works in this world, which yeah. I, I like that addition to it. So first she takes him to a doctor, which he's trying to grab at stuff. So she's like, well, I usually deal with ponies, so you might want to take him to a vet. So he, she takes him to a vet. Yeah, and, they actually have vets. Yeah, which is <laughs> odd, but makes sense but well, again the vet doesn't understand it so as a last ditch effort i thought they were going to take it to fluttershy but no they take it to him to zakora which i suppose makes sense because what's happening to him is pretty weird and she knows about weird she knows about weird magic so she explains well he's gonna be he's having his hoarding instinct he's gonna keep trying to grab at stuff and he's going to keep becoming evil and greedy and try to take stuff because he's becoming this massive monstrous dragon and it's gonna keep happening and it's gonna continue to snowball because as he gets more bigger he's gonna get even more greedy mm. it ends up by the end he's this massive king kong godzilla sized creature and we even have an homage to king kong in there <laughs> yeah when he reaches him for rarity he plucks rarity out of her tower wearing her special fire ruby necklace which she made out of the great gift that he gave her mm -hmm. he ends up climbing a mountain with his whole horde and he's about to i guess make a roost in there yeah yeah it's very conveniently placed mountain right next to ponyville well wasn't there i'm i'm sure there's mountains all over that they could do yeah they, i mean the question is quite a mountain in his place actually um all things considered but it was quite close to the town yeah it's like right down the fucking road exactly yeah of course for some reason the thunderbolts are there trying to stop him like where the hell did they come from i don't know it's kind of implied that they're almost like dragon busters which is weird considering in the previous episode they had the main six handle the dragon uh, yeah i they remember way back in the first season for it. so i don't know maybe someone just called them up and said we got a bit of a dragon problem yeah, can we you have help? a dragon problem we have a little dragon problem that's no little dragon yeah something like that the way that the episode finishes up is that he ends up remembering his gracious act his generous act of giving her the fire ruby and we see this from his perspective which he totally didn't say these things are her well you know your own mind kind of embellishes memory sometimes doesn't sometimes it? yeah so he ends up turning back to normal in midair which doesn't quite work out but uh well right? yeah yeah, Rainbow and Fluttershy end up saving them, so everything works out. Yes, and it all works out, and it's happily ever after. And this this is a really fun episode. I like this one a lot. Yeah, it's good it, fun. I mean, the, the first one was kind of just an event happening. This one was a bit sort of more actiony. It, it was actiony, but it also had sort of a mystery involved. I mean, regardless of how easy it was to figure out, you kind of assume. Even I figured even a younger person would very much assume what's going on here mm. is like is the dragon hoarding instincts, which I would imagine 
they have established quite well, again, look, going back onto the mythology of the series, I would imagine that it might come into play at a later point as well. Maybe not necessarily with Spike, but with some other dragon. Um, I'll let you stew on that one. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> I can't remember, truth be told. Okay, then. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess that does it for these two episodes. Definitely like the second one better, but... Yeah, well, as you say, it's good, it's good to have a Spike episode, because Spike's just fun. Yeah, Spike's awesome. Spike's great. And, you know, an episode where he essentially turns into a grumpy teenager is entertaining. Anyway, so, moving on to Breaking Bad. Today's episode was busy. Yes. Like, really Very busy. eventful episode. Um, I mean, the, the weird thing about it is I felt like I'd watched an entire 45-minute long episode... When I'd only watched about 35 minutes. Yeah, there I remember, was a lot happening in this one. And, you know, I, I remember I was looking at the clock and I thought, 35, I thought the episode was about to end. Have we got another 10 minutes on this yet? And I was just like, so yeah, a lot happened. I mean, it started with, I mean, one hell of an intro. This is how you do the introduction to a series, you know? Yeah. So the pre-title screen bit. It, I mean, it starts off just watching this kid riding around on his bicycle, you know, oh, isn't it also lovely? And the action eventually focuses on um, one of Jesse's dealer friends, uh, Combo, I think his yeah, name was. Combo. And of course, he's on a corner selling. And um, he's sort of approached by these two guys in a car who, they don't even talk, they just sort of sit there and stare at him for a bit and then drive off and then just he's hang around on the evil corner, eye. Yeah, just eyeing him up and watching him all the time. So anyway, he calls for backup wanting some help while that kid on the bike is just going in circles around him. And then out of absolutely nowhere, bang, gets shot by the kid on the bike, which I, I didn't strictly see coming. I kind of wondered why is this kid hanging around so much? Is there something going to happen with the kid? And then... You know, he just gets the gun out and shoots Combo dead. Multiple times, kid. yeah. Yeah, he, Combo's running away and the kid shoots him in the back. You know, that's not pleasant. No. Um, that, anyway, you... the kids and the guys in the car then take off and just leave him lying in the middle of the road. That's nice. Yeah, very harsh start to an episode, honestly. Yeah, really, really, really dark. Sorry to give you a dramatic whiplash there, yeah. but... Um, uh, yeah, so we go from cute, lovely little ponies to bang, you're dead. Well, that, well Spike did kind of go from a cute dragon to bang, I'll eat you all. So. Well, Segways! Yeah. Yeah. Segways. Yeah, mind your neck, it will break. Anyway, after the intro, Walter is having talks with his doctor about having a surgery. $170,000 surgery, oh, I might point out, in order to remove what's left of his cancer. I think the idea being that, you know, if they leave it, it'll grow back again. But because it's had such an amazing amount of shrinkage, they can remove it and he'll be cancer free. Well, they want to let the area heal, like the white spot that we saw in the previous episode. They want that to kind of heal itself. And yeah. then they go in there a couple weeks later, which coincides with the expected birth time of their daughter. Yes. Um, so they, they kind of want to sort of stagger things. So they'll delay the operation until just after the child is born uh you know so he can spend a couple of weeks with his new daughter and then they'll have the operation and it'll all be good in theory yeah. um in theory of in course theory, it's only after I'm that just... he, walter finds out about the death of jesse's friend. friend and you know walter who never really got to know them is a little cold about it like the first thing he asks is which one is he and, and jesse is just like fuck you man yeah which I, I suppose is understandable i mean you know one of jesse's best friends has just died but of course walter never even saw him he saw him as a, an employee he never really saw him not even as, as an employee though just as a subsidiary employee of his own employee so yeah exactly and, and of course so, this wasn't just an employee of jesse's this was one of his jesse's best friends mm, yeah and anyway one of other jesse's uh friends skinny is there um they have such imaginative names um After skinny pete and combo but um so bottom line of that scene is that skinny not to mention pretty much everybody else that jesse uh is currently running with 
have decided that they're out. Yeah. Because the story about him crushing a guy with an ATM machine, apparently the truth about that came out. Some cop blabbed about it or other. The wife ended up copying to it. Oh, was it? Oh, fair enough. I must have missed that. But uh, I, I don't know if there was something up with the audio, but this was a very quiet episode. Awesome. Maybe, uh, may, maybe it was just me. So they go to see, Jesse and Walter go to see Soul. And um, obviously they sort of tell him what happens. And Soul's like, you know, sorry to hear that. What's the next plan? Yeah, pretty Cause, much. Because he's, cause, cause he's practicing. I'm sure Saul deals with death on a fairly regular basis in his line of work. So he is rather even more callous about this than Walter. Well, he, he, you know, I mean, at least in Soul's defense, Soul never even met Badger at Badger. Or Combo. Combo. Combo, get it right. Uh, you know, so he doesn't, he, he didn't even know this person existed. Right. Until now. Walter did at least meet the guy once. But Sol's plan is to essentially put him in line with a very high level dealer. Because Walter is unsure about it after the whole Tuco incident. But Sol sort of insists and says, look, you got this, what was it, 38 and so Yeah, 38 pounds, pounds of, meth. of meth to unload, which is, damn, that's a lot of fucking meth. <laughs> yes. It, it's a bin bag full. You know, as we find out in the end of the episode. So after that, you got Jesse and Jane, who I feel like they're some sort of crime spree duo or something when you say it like that. <laughs> like like Bonnie and Clyde or Jesse? Yeah, the, Jesse and Jane. You're, it, thinking, it does. Je- you're thinking Jesse Jane, Jesse and James from Team Rocket? Uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I, I, think, I think you're kind of thinking... <laughs> I don't know, but they do. They sound a bit like some sort of crime spree duo when you say Jesse and Jane like that. Obviously, Jesse is like completely broken up about the death of his friend and he just wants to get high and just forget it. Jane is like, you don't want to do that. We'll we'll go to see these people. They can help. He's like, no, no, I'm going to get high. And Jane decides to join in. You know, despite she's been on the wagon for a while, she's decided she's going to get high again for Jesse. Not sure if that's worth it in the long run, but whatever, uh, her choice. (laughs) So you've got this meeting with this apparent high tone drug dealer guy. Which is being set up at a fast food chicken restaurant. So, spoilers, hermanos. Uh, I'll take your word for it. Um, <laughs> it is the Chicken Brothers. It's it's yeah. It's just a. It's like a KFC or a. I don't know. I don't think they have those there, but it's 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 a fast food chicken joint. Yeah. We have KFC in the UK. Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> um, UKFC. <laughs> no, it's just called KFC. We I also know. have Nando's, and this is the apparent meeting spot where the guy is supposed to show up. Only he doesn't. Walter pretty much wastes the entire day. Jesse shows up briefly when he's high as a kite. They have a small argument. Jesse storms off. I'm trying to compress these scenes down because otherwise I'm going to be talking here for a long fucking time because a lot oh, of shit yes. went on. Yeah, a lot of stuff happened in this episode. After that, Walter and Skylar go to the ultrasound for the baby and they uh, Skylar plans to have a C-section. Yeah, and so they, see, they it... plan it to be... They planned it for Friday, but that's a Friday the 13th. Okay, so we'll do the next Monday. Yeah. <laughs> they, of course, they give this really grotesque, like, 3D ultrasound, which is... <laughs> fucking disturbing as hell i think that is actually what ultrasounds look like these days i would imagine um, i guess but oh god yeah they are bizarre it's like watching the graphics from food fight <laughs> <laughs> isn't it it is isn't it you know it's that level bad graphics on this ultrasound there's one thing to be said about the quality of it but it's just you shouldn't be seeing this this <laughs> something man is not meant to see. I mean, it was creepy enough looking at those old sort of black and white ghost ones right. that they used to do. That That's creepy as hell. Anyway, Skylar is off back to work because Ted has a birthday party. So many birthdays. Unfortunately, obviously, Walter spent the entire day at the chicken restaurant. The guy never showed up. So he talks to Soul about it. He says, you know, you, you, you got to set up a meeting with him again. You know, why didn't he show up? Go talk to the guy. It's like, I didn't talk to the guy. I talked to a friend of a... A friend of a friend. Of a friend of, yeah, he's a very uh, private person, I guess he says. Which is understandable when we actually finally meet the guy. I kind of suspected who it was beforehand. My first guess is that when Sol was saying, oh, it's a friend of a friend, he's actually, that it was him. Right. But I, I wasn't sure about that. You know, it was like, well, it seems unlikely Sol would be involved in that kind of thing. Right. So, yeah, I kind of sort of half suspected who it was because I mentioned it to you a couple of times while we were watching the episode. Uh, Walter goes back to the restaurant, I suppose, in the hope of just sort of meeting him again. Kind of. I mean, they don't set up a second meeting, but he just kind of goes back there anyway. Yeah. And I'm not exactly sure what his train of logic was. I suppose it was kind of like mine. But he works out that the manager of the restaurant is the guy he was uh, looking for. Of course, the guy denies it at first, but eventually 
comes clean about the whole thing. Yeah. You know, and he, he basically hits Walter with some truths. You know, he didn't, you know, Walter isn't as careful as he thought because he's, you know, his best friend is a fucking drug user. And, you know, you can't trust drug addicts. I think was the bottom line yeah. for their conversation. Yeah, because if you are, I know that much. Is like if you are working in this industry, you have to be on top of things. You can't be using drugs all the time and expect to go very far. Yeah, because it's the smart people that survive in something like this. The people that know what they're doing, and you can't know what you're doing if you're getting high all the time. That's just a detriment to any business legitimate or not mm, yeah now obviously he gives both of the warning about jesse in that sense who at the time this is all going on jesse is getting friggin high as a kite <laughs> literally in in the episode he's decided to go from just you know inhaling meth, meth to injecting to actually injecting it and it, it's a brilliant scene where he just flops down on the bed and then just slowly starts to rise up which was brilliantly shot I mean, that was that was an expertly shot scene, just watching him slowly rise off the bed like that. <laughs> Very much like something out of Half-Baked, which I, um, I don't think you've seen, no. No, I have not seen. Yeah, I, I laughed at that, because that, that was really uh, very, very funny. So, Jesse's getting high. Walter is sort of negotiating a deal for all his meth with this... Uh, manager of the chicken restaurant and while that's going on Skyler who has been going through Ted's business's finances realizes that he has been well tax dodging yeah he's been he's been misreporting the income of his company which is very bad it's very bad because if you get caught you have to pay the money back and you go to prison yeah for quite a long time especially seeing as she works out he's dodged about a million pounds worth of Million, pounds, dollars. million dollars, dollars worth of tax, which is a lot of money. And it, it adds up. It's tiny bits, but it fucking adds up. Man. Yeah, so she's like, you're an old friend. I won't report you, but I can't work here anymore. I'm out. And then she leaves until a bit later on in the episode where she comes back. Of course. Because she probably realizes she needs the money more than, she, you know, she... More than she needs her pride. Yeah. yeah, more than she needs her pride. So, of course, Walter's working... He's giving a test at school. And oh, his yeah. phone ends up going off. Yeah, which, his, his, at first, he doesn't realize it's his own phone. Well, which is understandable, I suppose. Yeah, he, he, he passes it off as being just the pipe. Because the last time he used it, he was pretty angry, so he didn't turn it off oh, he, he, he knows it's away. his phone but he can't let the kids know that I, oh, well yeah, oh, obviously, yeah that's, that's so. my phone hidden up in the floorboards or the drop ceiling why did i say floorboards Whatever. i don't know why did you say floorboards it's clearly the city it, i, I mean, know it, it's, 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 it would be it's, the floorboards no. if they had a second floor on the uh on the school but i don't think they do at that particular building do they i have no idea moving on yeah moving on so <laughs> he he gets the he, he manages to get the phone after the lesson and it just says what was what was the name of the chicken Poyos. restaurant Poyos. that's it and it just said Poyos. so obviously he goes there he tries to find the manager and it's just this woman there instead it turns out the guy wasn't the manager of the restaurant he was actually the owner of the entire chain which i suppose if you're good in the drug world makes sense you're going to own an entire chain rather oh, than just a single because you gotta you can use the chicken line as a distribution network a distribution you know some money laundering because you can report income from the restaurant as yeah. income from your meth deal exactly exactly clearly this guy knows what the hell he's doing exactly um but anyway, so obviously the woman has no idea what the hell he's talking about. And then this random guy just grabs him and says, you know, meet me here. You've got an hour. We'll buy all your meth for one and a half million dollars. That'd be interesting to see him hide in the vent. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, he's like running around panicking, you know, trying to contact Jesse, who is off his freaking yeah, head. He's stoned off his mind right now. So he is out of the question. And this is right after Gus told him you can't trust drug addicts. Yeah, and he's like, you know, the Walter tries to say, well, can you give me just a little more time? I'm not sure if I can. No, you got one hour or the deal's off and don't ever show your face here again. So Walter is literally running his ass off. Uh, he breaks into Jesse's apartment, manages to get Jesse to tell him where the meth is. She's under the kitchen sink. It wasn't just like in a box under the sink. It was actually hidden in a sort of false panel. Hidden literally underneath the sink, yeah. Yeah, which it, it, it's a good place as any to hide it, I suppose. And it's right around this time that the worst of all coincidences happens. <laughs> um, 
Skylar goes into labor and she tries calling him, can't get through, and just sends a text saying baby's coming as he's trying to load up these bags of meth into a carrier bag so we can take it to this appointment. And that's where the episode ends. It literally ends with Walter leaving the Jesse's apartment with this bin bag full of meth, knowing his baby's on the way and that he's on a time limit with this meth deal. Cliffhanger, guys! Cliffhanger! <laughs> Oh, yes, this is a great way to start an episode and end an episode. Yeah, um, they're, they're definitely back on track. Because, I mean, the last few episodes have been a bit sort of floundering. They're between sort of subplots and all that stuff. But now, now all the subplots collide. Yeah, all the subplots have completely collided. It's all going to be very fun and hilarious for us, at least, if not for him. Um, we got two um, more episodes this season, so... Yeah, I was going to say, we're, we're also towards building something. towards towards the uh, end of the season, aren't we? So, uh yeah, this was a, a good episode. I mean, like I said, a lot happened in a short space of time. So it's good to see the sort of series get back on track again uh, in, in, in sort of that sense. I mean, e even the sort of non-happening episodes are still fun to watch because they're good characters. Oh, yeah. Again, a, a, bit like, a bit like Ponies in that sense. You know, it, it's fun to watch the characters interact in that exactly. sense. Which I suppose is sort of the mark of a really good show, isn't it? So, yeah, really good stuff in this uh, episode. Looking forward to the next one. Curious to see what's going to happen. Because not only does Walter have to do with this drug deal, he has to figure out how is he... What could possibly be so important that he missed the birth of his daughter? Yeah. I can't really say exactly what he was doing at the time. <laughs> of course, this is assuming he even makes the drug deal. True. And we still don't know what the hell's going on with that swimming pool. Yes. So two episodes to answer all the questions. So I'm curious what's going to happen. So, yeah, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> I much I guess that it. does it for um, Breaking Ponies. Yeah, for another week. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Take care, everybody.